Oh boy, there's two of them now. All right, what up y'all, it's Matt. So I got two Amazon welders behind me, the Vever 200 and the Vever 270. So we're gonna compare the two and see which one's better. Is the Vever 200 a weakling? Does the Vever 270 have as much power as it claims? Let's find out, guys. We're gonna compare Matt's shop style. Check it out. The MIG torch and the TIG torch and all the accessories are the same between the two models. Here they are side by side. You can see the 270 is just a little bit bigger. Here's the differences between the two models. Here's the controls on the 200. Here's the controls on the 270. The only difference is the burn back MIG. This 200 is only 220 volts only. The 270 is dual voltage. It has this adapter in the box. It goes from 220 to 110, so you can do 110 or 220. Here's the wire feed setup on the 200. Here's the wire feed setup on the 270. They're identical. The 200's got a gas port and a fan. Here's the specs. 270's got the gas port and a fan. Here's the specs. 200 polarity wires and MIG socket. 270 polarity and MIG socket, they're the same. Flux core MIG. So it's not too bad on this dirty trailer metal. You can see I got a little bit of porosity right here, but it's gonna take some fine tuning, obviously. Stick. So you can see it's doing pretty good. I'm not that great a stick welder. Um, but it's getting pretty good penetration. It does seem like it wants a lot more current when you put it on stick mode. Flux core MIG. Not too bad for this nasty trailer metal. It's doing pretty good, there ain't many BBs. Stick. All right, so the stick's not too bad. Let's crank it to the max. MIG, crank to the max. Not too bad. Lay down a lot of wire pretty fast. Stick, crank to the max. That, not bad on this cast iron. It put down a lot of heat really fast. To the max. Man, I'm really impressed. That had a lot of power. That put a lot of wire down really fast. It welded that no problem. Even though I think it's cast iron. Stick. So that thing stick welds good too. You can see it's cast iron, but I mean, it put the heat to it no problem. It's got plenty of power. All right, let's hook a clamp up to these things and see if they're putting out as many amps as they claim. All right, here's the settings, MIG. We're hitting 238, that is impressive. Stick 180 and 22. There's the max we got, it's a little low. Here's the settings we're running at, 271 amps, 24 volts. Yeah. 
Also keep in mind we're using 0.035 wire. It's a little small for that amperage. It needs to be much bigger, keep that in mind. Stick, here's the settings we're running at. 200 amps, 24 volts. Here's what we came up with, not bad guys. Let's test the wire feed speeds. Float it for about 10 seconds and then multiply it by six to come up with inches per minute. So we just pulled the wire out and measured it with the measuring stick to see what it came up to. The 200 amp welder wire speed is much faster. I don't know what the deal is with that. You would think the 270 is faster, but it's not. On the 270, you can see it's a little bit faster on the 220 versus the 110, which is to be expected. The wire speed adjustments were the same on both machines. I'm sure these aren't industry standard specs. It seems to get the job done. I'm still not happy with these speeds though. I really wanna be able to control it independently of the current. So on the MIG, the wire feed speed and the current is locked together just like the other model. Um, it's kind of annoying, right? I'd like to be able to control it independently, but they did a pretty good job figuring out how much wire speed you need, you know, depending on the current. And uh, it feeds and welds just fine like this. It's got this burn back MIG right here. I keep it halfway. It seems to be doing fine like that. It would be pretty cool if we could modify this switch right here just to control the wire speed and then leave the current separate. That would be a pretty cool modification. I might try to do that in the future. The wire feed motor in the 270 is super loud. I don't know, it's really loud. It sounds bad, but it works. So we can't test the gas MIG or the TIG function in this video because just like the other review, I don't have any gas here, so we'll have to get some and test that in the future. That'll be an update video to see how perfect the welds we can get out of this machine. The TIG torch that comes with this, it looks great just like the other one. I don't have any problems with the quality of it. The stinger lead here is already broken right out of the box. You know, it broke instantly. It's all plastic. You can get a better one of those and get a better ground clamp just like the other model. The controls are set up pretty nicely on these machines. Stick voltage 15 to 22, current 30 to 180. TIG voltage 15 to 22, current 30 to 180. MIG voltage 15 to 23. Current 31 to 200. Stick voltage 15 to 24. Current 36 to 220. TIG voltage 15, 24. Current 36 to 220. MIG voltage 15 to 24. Current 46 to 271. All right guys, so they're putting out at least their rated current, right? The numbers are kind of all over the place. Do with this information what you will. Here's how I tested them. Here's the results I came up with. Let me know what you think in the comments below. All in all, they're good welders for what they are. DIY projects like this, you know, expect them to weld what you need to weld and get the job done. I'll check y'all out on the next one. Later.